Defining your department structure is the first step for a successful QuickBooks point of sale setup. In most retail businesses, related merchandise is grouped into departments. Establishing and using departments is a good way to monitor your sales performance, manage inventory, and run meaningful reports, which will help you make informed buying decisions. A well-designed department structure will also help you save time and give you greater flexibility when conducting a physical inventory, changing prices, and printing tags. Before you set up your departments in QuickBooks Point of Sale, you need to decide how you want to break out your sales, merchandise, and purchasing reports. Let's go to my Sales Department Summary Report. We'll click into Reports, we'll go to Sales, and then we'll go to the Department Summary. So once we look at this Department Summary, let's say we want to look and see what our profit margins were. Before you set up your departments in QuickBooks Point of Sale, you need to decide how you want to break out your sales, merchandise, and purchasing reports. Let's go to the Sales Department Summary Report to give you an example. Let's click on Reports, Sales, Department Summary. Okay, we can go ahead and choose what date range to look at the information. And so let's say we want to compare what we spent as far as our cost on these computers between Dell and HP. So as you can see, here was our extended price of what the customer paid. And with the Dell, they purchased one computer. We had one sale with the Dell, and then we had two sales with the HP computer. Now, as you can see, the, the price that we charged the customer was lower with the HP, and our, but our extended cost was higher. So our the margin that we received from that, the profit margin, was lower with the HP and higher with the Dell. So that kind of gives you an example as far as how you want to plan your departments so that these reports, you get really useful information from these reports. Before you set up your departments in QuickBooks Point of Sale, you need to decide how you want to break out your sales, merchandise, and purchasing reports. Let's go to the Sales Department Summary Report, and I'll give you an example. Let's say that we want to know what the profit margin was from your Dell computers compared to your HP computers. This will give me the sales price of what I received. Before you set up your departments in QuickBooks Point of Sale, you need to decide how you want to break out your sales, merchandise, and purchasing reports. Let's go to the Sales Department Summary Report. For example, if I want to know what my profit margin was for the Dell computers compared to HP computers, this will give me the sales information of the money received, the price that I paid for it, and then the profit margin so that I can make knowledgeable purchasing and selling decisions. So what this may tell me is I I have a higher profit margin with Dell, but maybe I sell more HPs. So that's kind of what you want to think about when you're creating your departments. Another thing you want to think about is, do you have categories of merchandise that are taxed differently or that you price differently than others? For example, service work is not taxable in Michigan. So you can see on the department list, I created a, a department that is just showing the service so that all the tax code is with non-taxable. Also, you want to be able to filter your item list for purposes of changing prices, printing tags, or conducting physical inventory counts. So let's go ahead and go to the item list, and I'll give you an example. So here in the item list, as you can see, and you probably have a lot more inventory items than what's shown here, but you're going to want to be able to search out maybe our particular department. So let's, let's go ahead and see everything that's in under the RAM items. So this will bring up, your search results will bring up everything under those items, and then you can go ahead and change the cost and the price right here. And actually, I wouldn't suggest to change the cost in this area. 
uh, but it does show you, it does act like a spreadsheet. This is also an area where you can print tags. So you can click on the print tab button and then you can go ahead, this is just going to show the one that's selected, but if you highlight these items, click on your print tabs, then you can go ahead and print all the items, or print only the selected items. So if you click on all, it will print everything. Give me a preview, and there you go. So as you can see, that's something else that you might want to figure when you're when you're setting up your department structure. And then you also, I'm going to take you to the physical inventory. You can also sort by department. So a lot of times I have people that run physical inventories, but they just go ahead and perform one department at a time. So it's pretty easy to do. We can go to the departments and let's just go ahead and choose everything that's under the hardware. Click OK and apply that and it will just bring up those items and then you can go ahead and just run the physical inventory based on, on your what filtering you chose. Okay, I'm going to close out of there. Go to the home screen. Um, also, departments can also be identified by a department code which can be used to search for department record and, it, and you can also have it printed on the price tag. So we got the department list right here, and as you can see, you can either have a three-digit uh, letter, numerical code, it's up to you. Um, and this is optional, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but this is also another way for sorting preferences that makes it easier for you and your clerks to be able to find your departments and your items faster. Another thing that that I have learned over time with my clients is that they want to be able to have a department but then also have a, a subcategory. If you've ever worked within QuickBooks Financial, you will know that you can have uh, sub-departments that go with your main department. Well, we've come up with a way to give the illusion of subcategories. So here is where you can go ahead and have the main department and then put the subcategory that you want. I'm just going to give you an example here real quick. So we're just going to go ahead, let's go with software. That's a department code and then for the department, we're, let's go ahead and put uh, let's go software into it. Leave all of that the same. So that will create a new department for software. Now we can also have, let's go ahead and edit this main category here, software. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll just put Adobe. So this will be able to sort out your different, your different subcategories that you want to. So you, you will be able to run reports on those two different, two different items. We recommend you only define as many departments as you need to effectively manage your purchasing and reporting. For example, when you go into a department store like Target, you will see the department signs to show where a specific set of items are located. There is no good reason for any retailer to have more than 20 or so departments, since there are so many other ways of filtering data. I've learned from experience that too many departments can result in too much detail on reports. This makes it difficult to get useful, consolidated data. Additionally, when clerks enter items, having too many departments makes it likely that the wrong department might be selected, leading to bad item setup and reporting. Keep in mind with QuickBooks Point of Sale Multi-Store that remote stores can view department records and use them to filter reports, but only headquarters can add or edit departments.